Okay, so we are ready to start talking about quantum gates. So I'm sure many of you know about classical gates, where you have um, a wire that carries a bit of information. And then you might have a gate like a not gate, which just, which just flips the bit. Or you might have a gate like an AND gate, which takes as input two bits, and it outputs one bit, which is the, the output bit is one, if and only if both input bits are one. So now, how do we think of a quantum gate? So let's start with single qubit quantum gates. So the quantum gate will take as input, so what comes in as a wire, which we think of as carrying, so, so we have a wire, which we think of as carrying a qubit of information. And then the quantum gate performs some unitary transformation on this qubit and outputs a qubit which is, which is in this new state. So it takes as input a qubit in some state psi and outputs a qubit in the state u psi. Okay, so let's look at examples. So our first example is a bit flip gate, which is given by this transformation x u0110. So now what does this do to what's x times zero? Well, this is just that. And as you can see, this, is, um, this gives us zero, one, which is just the state one. And similarly, x times one is just one, zero, which is, which is, the, which is the basis state zero. So what x does is it flips, flips the, the basis states. It, it maps 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. But now, of course, in general, the input to, this, to the x gate, or the bit, bit, bit flip gate, is going to be a superposition of 0 and 1. And so what it's going to do is, is it, it's going to map this 0 to a 1 and that 1 to a 0. And so if your input was this superposition, alpha zero zero plus alpha one one, the output is alpha one zero plus alpha zero one. Now, of course, there's one other thing we must do before we call this a quantum gate. We've got to verify that X is a unitary transformation. So what we must do is verify that X dagger X equal to X, X dagger equal to the identity. So what's x dagger? Well, x dagger is x itself. And so what, what, we are, what we must do is verify that x squared is the identity. And that's an easy thing to do. It's a, it's a good exercise for you. Our second gate is the face flip gate, which is given by this transformation, z. OK, so again, let's see what, what's z times what does it do to the zero state? Well, it's just this product, which is just the zero state. So it leaves it alone. What about the one state? Well, what it does to it is it puts a minus sign in front of it. Now, what's the point of this, of this minus sign? Well, so again, if you start with a linear superposition of 0 and 1, alpha 0, 0 plus alpha 1, 1, it gets mapped to alpha 0, 0 minus alpha 1, 1. Okay, here's where something, you know, let's see, there's something interesting to say here. Suppose you start with the plus state, which is 1 over square root 2, 0, plus 1 over square root 2, 1. What does z do to it? The phase flip gate acting on this gives us 1 over square root 2, 0 minus 1 over square root 2, 1, which is minus. And similarly, you can verify that z changes minus to plus. OK, once again, before we say this is a quantum gate, we've got to verify that it's unitary. OK, but again, as in the bit flip case, z dagger is just z itself. And so all we have to do is verify that z squared is the identity, and that's, that's easy to see. 
Okay, now, remember we, we said that um, a unitary transformation is a rotation of the space. So what kind of rotation is the bit flip? After all, it, it switches zero to one and one to zero. It seems more like a reflection about this axis, about the 45 degree axis. So in what sense is it a rotation of the space? Well, remember, we are not, we are not working in a two-dimensional real space, but we are, we are working in a complex vector space. And so that gives us more room to rotate. And in fact, what it is, is a rotation about this axis where you where imagine that you have a, you know, although this is not the right picture, but, but, but just as an intuitive first, you know, way of thinking about it, imagine you had a third dimension and that you were twirling this, this picture around this rotation axis. And so, so now if you, if you, if you rotate through 180 degrees or angle of pi, then this zero will go, let's say, up above the plane, one will go below the plane, and then, then they'll, you know, at some point they'll be orthogonal to the plane and they keep, keep rotating until zero comes back and it, it goes where this, this, the one state was and one in the meantime replaces the zero. Okay, so that's, that's the way to picture it. Face flip gate, well, what does it do? Well, here's what it does. It leaves the zero state alone and it maps one to minus one. And so what, what we are doing is we are rotating the space around this axis, the, the, the horizontal axis through 180 degrees and that, that leaves the zero state alone and it moves one to minus one. In the process, what it also does is it, it swaps plus and minus, right? So, so it swaps these two. Okay. Now, the third um, elementary gate and one of the most important gates is the Hadamard transform, which looks like this. It's, um, its entries are one over square root two, one over square root two, one over square root two, and minus one over square root two. So let's again see, what does it map zero to? So zero goes to h of zero, which is one over square root two, one over square root two, one over square root two, minus square, one over square root two, times one zero. So that picks out this first column. Now this should be a state that you recognize. So this is plus state. What about one? Gets mapped to h of one. This picks out the second column of this matrix. Again, that's the minus state. Okay, so now, as before, we must uh, verify that this is a unitary transformation. So we want, want to check that h dagger h equal to h h dagger is the identity. But once again, if you notice h dagger, what's h dagger? Well, complex conjugates, all the entries are real, so they stay unchanged. And then by symmetry, it's, it's just, just h itself. So you get, we must check that h squared is the identity. And that's, again, something that you can easily do here. Okay, so the fact that in all these three elementary gates we've seen, the square of the gate is identity means that if you apply the gate twice, you get back to where you started from. Okay, so in the case of the bit flip, it was clear. If you flip a bit twice, you get back to where you started from. In the case of the Hadamard, what this is telling us is that since zero gets mapped to plus, well, if you apply the Hadamard again, plus gets mapped to zero. And similarly, zero gets mapped to minus, minus gets mapped to, mapped to zero. So this is, this is actually something interesting. Zero gets mapped to one over square root two zero plus one over square root two one. One gets mapped to one over square root two zero minus one over square root two one. If you were to measure after performing a Hadamard transform, 
then in the standard basis, you would see zero and one with equal probability, regardless of whether you started from zero or one. At this point, naively, you might think you lost all the information about where you started from. But in fact, that information is stored in the, in the phase, whether it's plus or minus. And if you apply another Hadamard transform, you can recover that phase information back into the bit information. And now if you measure, you can actually tell whether you started from zero or one. Okay, once again, we can look at the geometrical picture of this and we can say, what does the Hadamard transform do? What, it's, what, what is it a rotation about? Wh which axis? Well, remember it maps zero to plus, plus to zero, one to minus, minus to one. The axis is this pi over eight axis. That's the rotation axis. And again, we are rotating about this axis through 180 degrees so that, you know, this comes, zero comes off the, you know, off the plane. This, you know, again, this is a rough picture. One plus goes under the plane and they swap places. Okay, so finally, let's see something rather interesting. You know, there's something rather interesting about how the Hadamard and the phase and the bit flip relate to each other. So what we saw is, is that what the Hadamard transform does is it, is it swaps between zero and plus and one and minus. Now what does, what does the bit flip gate X do? Well, it swaps zero and one. And what does the phase flip gate do? It swaps plus and minus. So in fact, it turns out you know, that, that if you want to apply a bit flip, so you want to swap zero and one, one way to do it is you apply the Hadamard. So now zero has been renamed. You have done a change of basis so that instead of zero and one, you're working with plus and minus. But now if you want to swap plus and minus, you should apply the phase flip gate, Z. And so what you can write is that X is the same as applying, first applying a Hadamard, then applying X, applying Z, and then applying the inverse of the Hadamard, which is the Hadamard itself, right? Because H squared is the identity, H equal to H inverse. So what we're saying is, if we start from, from the bit zero, we apply the Hadamard, we get plus, we apply Z, we get minus, we apply the Hadamard, we get one. And this is exactly like we applied X.